Hello, once again, we are here to discuss the next class of antihypertensive drugs, as we previously discussed the ACE inhibitors and renin angiotensin system in detail. As we know, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system plays a crucial role in the pathophysiology of a number of illnesses, including hypertension, congestive heart failure, and chronic kidney disease of many varieties, including diabetic nephropathy. Let's revise a little. The renin secreted in the kidney is catalyzed into angiotensin by angiotensinogen in the liver. Angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by ACE enzymes. These angiotensin 2 have two binding site in heart, brain, medulla, and kidney. The two receptors for angiotensin 2 are AT1 and AT2 receptors, or angiotensin 2 type 1 and type 2 receptors. Blockades of the RAAS system can occur on several levels. Direct renin inhibitors, which prevent the synthesis of renin, and angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors, which prevent the conversion of angiotensin 1 into 2. As we have seen, inhibition of ACE stops the conversion of angiotensin 1 into 2 and results in blockade of RAAS. Here, ARB works the same as ACE inhibitors, just that the blockade occurs at AT1 receptors to inhibit the action of angiotensin 2. ARBs and ACE inhibitors both have similar indications for use. ARB medication is recommended as an option for individuals who are unable to take ACEI therapy because of an ACE-induced cough or angioneurotic edema, which is one of the common side effects of taking ACE inhibitors for a long time. One of the most used ARB drugs are Telmasartan, Almasartan, Lorsatin, and Valsartan. Let's start with Telmasartan. Telmasartan is the longest-acting angiotensin II receptor blocker in the market with a mean half-life of 24 hours. Telmasartan is one of the most commonly used and effective ARBs used to reduce cardiovascular-related mortality in adults aged 55 and older who have risk factors for serious cardiovascular events and cannot tolerate ACEI. It's also used in stroke prophylaxis and myocardial infarction prophylaxis. It comes in doses of 40 and 80 mg and can be administered orally once a day. Number 2. Olmosartan. Olmosartan is another drug of choice in hypertension. It can be administered orally and comes in doses of 5, 20, and 40 mg. Initially, a 20 mg dose is started once a day for hypertensive patients. The next important ARB is Valsartan. Valsartan can be given in cases of hypertension, LVH, heart failure, and LVD following myocardial infraction. Available as a 40 mg, 80 mg, 160 mg, and 320 mg tablet and is administered orally. For hypertension, initial dose 80 to 160 mg by mouth once daily, a maximum daily dose of 320 mg is given. In case of heart failure, initial dose of 20 to 40 mg by mouth twice a day, with a maximum dose of 160 mg twice a day can be given. And last, Losartan. Losartan was the first ARB to ever be approved, so it has the longest track record of success. Losartan is available in tablet forms of 25 mg, 50 mg, and 100 mg. The initial dosage for hypertension is 50 mg taken orally once a day, with a maximum dose 100 mg. ARBs typically have minimal incidences of adverse effects and are well tolerated. Because ARBs do not raise bradykinin levels, the incidence of angioedema and cough is lower with ARBs than with ACEI. In individuals whose arterial blood pressure or renal function is heavily dependent on the RAAS, ARBs can result in hypotension and or renal failure. Due to this, individuals with bilateral renal artery stenosis or heart failure patients who have hypotension should not use these medications. The patient is more likely to experience hypotension, renal impairment, and hyperkalemia while taking an ARB. For the duration of ARB treatment, the patient's blood pressure, renal function, and serum electrolytes should all be carefully monitored. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and support us to learn more. Thank you.